Hi, my name's Johnny. I'm going to try and restore this clock that I bought from a uh, watch and clock fair. I've got no experience in restoring these things, so uh, I'd always appreciate any comments you guys might make. This is all just by trial and error, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cock ups during this video. So as I said, um, I have a go at restoring this slate clock. It's really old, it's probably about 100 odd years old. The slate's gone quite misty in areas and I've looked up on Google the best way to restore that. It's got all these inlaid features as well which will need bringing out. I had a little go at that when I was bored the other day and made a balls up of that. So I'm going to redo marble pillars which uh, make it stand out really nice looking thing very very heavy oh. and from behind uh, cover see the clockwork in there it's still moving take the pendulum out to try on something else and it's also got this chime on there which will be really good when I get it working. So let's see what we can do with it. It cost me 25 quid, so all I'm really wasting is a bit of time, probably a lot of time and a little bit of money, but hopefully I should be able to bring it up and um, uh, put it on my mantelpiece or something, not give it away. Right. Uh, to begin with, we'll take out the mechanism by undoing these two screws which hold everything sandwiched in together, the front and rear. You've also got to be careful with the front don't just pop out and get ruined. Undo this one as well holding the front at the same time there you go that's taken that off now hopefully there you go there's the clock part itself removed the chime is still in there not sure how that's fixed it looks like it might be screwed in from underneath uh, but there we have it check the underneath yep yeah, there is a bolt there which holds a chime on the wooden base now First of all, uh, we want to get this all cleaned up and I'm just going to clean it with a bit of warm water, fairy liquid and some brushes. Okay, I've got myself some uh, warm water with a bit of fairy liquid in it. I'm going to use just an old paintbrush to try and get into all the little crevices getting there this thing could be I could have dirt built up on it from from the last hundred years I could try and use something a little bit stronger on it but I'm not sure what that might do to the slate I don't really want to risk it um, until I know a bit more about it, these things I just generally just go around softening up all the dirt and I'll go back over it to try and dislodge it all. In an ideal scenario, I would have had a tray big enough to put this in, catch all the water. I can see dirt coming off of this going into the water when I've just put me brushing. 
the first thing would be just to give it all a bit of a soak a bit like you do when you're washing a car to soften up all the grime and whatnot it's only fairy liquid I'm using that's meant to be pretty good for breaking up grease and whatnot If I was a bit braver, or if I knew a bit more, I'd use something like sugar soap, but I'm not sure at this stage what that will do to the slate. If you could see that on the camera, it's got very, very misty, foggy. Some of this, um, I'm also going to use a little bit of this uh, scotch pad just to see if I can get a bit more grime off of this. And that's obviously having some sort of effect. The, the suds are now going brown. Could of course just be the slate. <laughs> coming off with this abrasive thing that I'm using but that shouldn't be too much of a problem in any case because when we put the finishing coat on this oh yeah the water's gone blank yeah when we put the finishing coat on this it will hide anything that I've done now anyway just trying to get into the little corners and crevices I don't know like with anything preparation is uh, the key to getting a good finish I used to spray cars years ago and the spraying part was easy it was preparation which was all the hard work so I'm trying to kind of utilize my little bit of knowledge from those days to this. It looks lovely when it's wet. It's got a real nice shine to it. I'm hoping that's what it's going to look like when I'm finished completely. used to it really I'm trying to almost fill the silent gaps with some sort of information but it's probably like rubbish information anyway so probably best I keep quiet yeah I can see that cleaning up really well I can see the areas where where the clock face was on, where like a, a lot of the grime had built up around where maybe they tried cleaning it in the past and couldn't get into the tiny little corners of this. I just finished this up by going back over it with a brush. A stiffer brush probably would have been a bit better rather than soft old uh, paintbrush okay now it's uh, ready for drying but first of all I'm just spray it with clean water to get the soap and such off of it
just using plain mortar. Okay, so now I've just uh, rinsed it off. I'm going to use a bit of paper toweling to dry it. I'd rather this than cloth because it's just more absorbent. Bit of coin still coming off on there. I can watch for that. Already looks better. Look at that simple clean. But as it goes white, uh, sorry, as it dries, I know for sure all that white fogging. It's going to start to show back up again. I'm sure, like someone out there is going to say to me, Oh, you idiot, you're doing it the wrong way. which I'd be happy for any good advice because I've been looking on YouTube for videos on how to restore one of these and I can't seem to find anything specific especially for the slate there's a ton of um, clock uh, restoration videos but I haven't seen anyone restore one of these and every time I looked for slate restoration they were showing me sort of kitchen and bathroom tiles or worktops and things like that which is not what I wanted but in the end I did find a product and I'll show you that in the second part of this which is meant to be specifically the clocks. I'll wait for that to fully dry and then I'll get on to the uh, coating process to bring up the shine. Okay. The uh, clock has dried with a little bit of help with of my um, hot air gun because I was too impatient to wait you can see I've already started masking off one of these pillars I'm going to mask them off because uh, stuff can be a little what, what we're going to put on there can be a little bit of a pain cleaning up afterwards so it's worth the extra effort uh, to protect as much as you can it can be cleaned but it just makes your life a bit easier in the end if you uh, do try to protect as much as you can I'm not going to go through the whole masking up process with you uh, needless to say normal masking tape and I'm just using a scalpel to cut it in as fine as possible so I'll come back to you once it's all masked off right so I'm pretty well masked up and um, dusted it all off and I'm ready to go what I'm going to be using is this stuff, Curator Slate Blacking. I got it from Cousins, uh, it's about under 20 quid anyway. Uh, tried this on a, another clock and it, it's the best thing. It really works lovely. Believe me, I've tried everything from shining them up with WD-40, olive oil, boot polish, all sorts of uh, other things that I could think of anything I could find in a cupboard I tried and nothing turned out as well as this stuff nothing would truly take away the fogging so that's how we're gonna uh, coat this that's the next process now uh, now to apply the liquid I'm using a little piece of um, 
it's a bit of bed sheet really, Egyptian cotton and a bit of uh, cotton wool which you're going to wrap up in there a bit like the uh, French polishers do uh, this should give me a nice smooth uniform finish when I'm applying okay <clears throat> so I'll be using my little um, oh, French polishers pad and this is just an experiment I made a little French polishers pad on a stick a bit of cotton wool a bit of cloth I've got my paint brushes as well I don't know how much of this stuff I'm going to use I'm still experimenting with this whole thing really the first clock I did weren't brilliant I uh, suppose I learned a little bit from that yeah just stroke it on and it says not to rub it in and straight away you can see the effect that we're going to have and this effect as you see it will be as it what it's going to be like in the end some of these corners I'm finding difficult to get into so I don't really want to be using a paintbrush because it will have a different texture to the pad but as I say this is all still an experiment for me uh, yeah getting in deep into there is a bit of a problem so again I'll just use a paintbrush to sort of go in there and then just wipe it off with the cloth where the cloth can go same as underneath there as well as I did say in the beginning I don't really know what I'm doing this is just me experimenting with this stuff because I can't find any tutorials anywhere so feel free to mention or let me know if there's anything that's got a better way of doing than what I'm doing
so there we are for the first stage of it. I'm going to let that dry overnight and take a look at it and possibly wire wool it. I'll decide tomorrow and then give it another coat. Two coats I think on this should be enough. It's covering pretty well and uh, see what the finished product looks like.